and beanie fans and welcome to another episode of the shite and sarcasm engineering show today's show starts off with powerpoint it is the one that you probably have been waiting for it is this which is corporate scumbags shimano from the planet wanketeering get shit from a five-year-old this is about the repeated Shimano crank set failures that people around the world are having. Um, my website, Hambini, well, it's actually my dad's website, but anyway, Hambini.com, uh, Hambini, Eng on Shitestagram, and I'm now on pay per view on patreon.com forward slash Hambini. So um, you can watch on there. Uh, there's stuff on there which is exclusive, and you get stuff. Um, Sooner, whatever that's called, previews and all that shit. By Hambini, aged five. First of all, a comment, well, a segment from my video sponsor. So Paul made a donation to the Red Cross to sponsor this video. So let us play that now. Hello, Hambini fans, and welcome. Today's video is sponsored by some random guy on the internet. And also by today's word of the day, hold on, I need to use something that is en that was engineered by a five-year-old. And now back to today's video. Right, to give you a bit of history and background, we haven't done the famous pen is working. So before we uh, carry on, the pen is working. Right, so I have, I've got three, uh, three four Shimano crank sets. The one um, that um, has caused me a bit of grief is the 9100 series. And what happened was, over the course of a couple of months, I started to get knee pain. Now, normally, a um, doctor would examine your left and right knee and then see if there's any sort of discrepancy. But I've got a gunshot wound on my left knee, and that was the the one that was, was okay. <laughs> okay. And the right one was the one that was giving me trouble. So this went on forever and ever. And in the end, I put the bike onto a turbo trainer, and then I could see my foot tipping. And that's where we need to go and do this. So this is a Shimano Jura Ace 9100 series crank set. This one's a 50 by 34. Don't know if that's subcompact, compact or wimp gears as I like to call them. It comes in two assembled pieces. So this is the drive side um, and this is the non-drive side. The way this goes together is that goes through the bike. You've got this preload system here and a series of splines for the crank arm on the non-drive side to lock on like that. Push that down and then screw that in to give you the preload. Now this part is steel. So that is a steel axle, I'll just show you. magnetic the rest of it is basically aluminium this bit where the um, axle goes into the bike is 24 millimeters it's unusual because the standard bearing size would go up in five millimeter increments so it would be 20 25 and then 30 is a popular size Shimano have done it so that um, the axle never touches raw metal um, and the reason for doing that is to prevent under rotation and axle induced wear um, so in, in that respect it's a good thing to do but it does make it more difficult if you are a supplier to make something to fit this because you'll either have to have non-standard bearings or some delrin sleeves and so my bottom brackets have delrin sleeves now these are the crank arms so you've got your standard um, pedal thread hole on one side and uh, the spline in space on the other. This arm is hollow. 
So it's made effectively in two pieces that are glued together. It's the same deal on this side, but it's a bit more of an elaborate shape. So we've got chain rings, which are, I think they're 7075 aluminium. Um, and then the crank arm spider, which again, I think is made in two pieces. And then you've got uh, some sort of bonding arrangement between the axle and the crank arm spider. The axle is steel and the crank arm is spider is aluminium so you cannot weld the two together. Let's get this apart and show you what's gone on. But before we do that, let me explain exactly what happened. To the naked eye, this looks like it's scuffed and scratched. Um, you wouldn't say it has failed, but on this side, on the shear side or the tension side, this has split here. It's very, very difficult to see, um, but I'm going to show you when I clamp it in my vise that it's split and also the noise it makes because it sounded just like a bottom bracket creak. So first of all, the noise. So all I've done here is I've just clamped the um, drive side into my uh, vise and we're just going to apply a little bit of tinkering load. So you can just about hear that creaking. Imagine that happening every time it was going around. What I wonder is how many people have thought their bottom bracket was creaking and it turned out to be the defect in the crank arm spider. Now I'll show you just how small that defect is. The defect point is here. That's where it has become disbonded. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these things apart out off and then give it a flex so you can visually see how much it's flexing. So I've clamped the uh, axle in. This axle's fucked now, we're gonna kill it in a minute. So um, those of you who are screaming, going, oh, you shouldn't be clamping it in like that, can go and screw yourselves. Um, and I've taken the chain rings off and I've just put a screwdriver through because you're about to see exactly where this failure point is. It's all, hopefully, if I zoom in a bit more, see it's completely come apart. All disbonded. See if I can get a better view of that. Again. Should be able to see the two halves. Just, oh. It's completely come apart. So, let's rip it to bits and have a look inside. Here's a bit more for the happy ending shot. Happy Shimano ending. Right. So we can see the outer there, the inner there, and all that is coming apart. I'll get the screwdriver in and wedge this apart now. So ladies and gentlemen, what we have there is a fine bit of aluminium corrosion. I do love a bit of failure analysis, especially when the manufacturer's representative didn't want to fess up to it. Um, now this, I, I, I thought was forged, um, but I'm looking at it thinking that almost feels like it's cast. So, um, cast and then machined, but I don't know how you'd get the strength from that. It just looks from the surf troughs. And, uh, and again, I don't know if that's been from corrosion or what, but I can't imagine that being cast. Um, anyway, that side, we've got now, we can see how this goes together. So that axle, steel axle, is basically like a rivet. So the end is rounded off 
around this piece. Um, and then this is the cap that kind of goes over it. So that's the, your two mating pieces that go together. All, almost all the adhesive has stuck very well to this. Okay, it's stuck there, stuck there, it's stuck there. You can see the, the, the holes um, in the corners. You know, it's reasonably good. The other bit is this. This is aluminium corrosion. Um, and it's excessive aluminium corrosion and if, if you look down the side the sides kind of give it away so we've got nothing here so there's been good bond there and that corresponds with the reverse on there so it's it's stuck well there's nothing over here the adhesive is stuck well to this part but has not adhered well to here and then you've got the onset of aluminium corrosion there and around here. So that's where this has started. Well, it could have started anywhere. You've also got a battery nicely set up for you because you've got steel onto aluminium and that, that will create a battery. Um, and so you're going to get corrosion products from there. I mean, that hasn't fared too badly. And if you look at that, the, the point where most of the corrosion is on there is here, which is very close to the steel section. So I wonder if that is where the problem has started from. Anyway, we'll go back in and have a look a little bit more. Right, so to give you an overview of what is happening um, pedal dynamically, this is a uh, sketch that I think I got from Bike Radar's website. I'm not quite sure, but it looks like it's been provided by Shimano and it shows like the hollow section of the crank arms. The way that the um, crank arm is is made, and you've just seen it, is it's almost like two C-sections on top of each other, like that. And then in between, you've got some adhesive, like that. Now that adhesive is, is trying to resist shear stress. Now the shear stress is caused by um, like a, an angle. Um, so if you're looking at the bike from behind, you've got uh, one chain ring, two chain rings, axle that comes through, and then this is the crank arm, which I haven't drawn very well, with your pedal on the end. Okay, um, and then the corresponding pedal on the other side. Oh, this looks like a five-year-old has drawn it. Anyway. When you're pedaling, you've got like the, the forward rotation, but because you're applying a load there, so that's your weight, you've also got a, a torque. Some people might call that a moment that's acting like that. That is acting here. So on this section, it's trying to twist it out all the way along, all of them. And that is the, the, the primary mode, the um, adhesive is trying to stop, is basically shear. Um, the compressive loads are contained because it's, it's a clamping C-section. Now, loads of these failures exist. There's absolutely shed loads of them. There is a Instagram page called Thanks Shimano. And if you have a look, all of them exhibit the same kind of failure mode that you've seen. So you get this it looks like um, I mean, it almost looks like some sort of disease going around in here, um, and that that tends to be where there's a lot of corrosion. You can see on this one, um, I mean, God, look at it. it. This one's actually snapped in half. Now I don't think that is the, the root cause. The root cause looks to be here. You can see this this corrosion. Now I've got no doubt Shimano are aware of this, but the cycling press don't really cover it. I mean, the closest someone has come to covering it is uh, there's an article by Bike Radar. So if I discard that, this one, um, understanding an unusual, I would, I would say it's fairly run of the mill Shimano crank failure, <laughs> go through it, and there's actually a statement um, from uh, from his, his name is Ben. Hillsden. Now I did look him up. Um, I mean, uh, people will accuse me of stalking, but 
they'd look him up on LinkedIn. So this is his LinkedIn profile, just to see if, if we were getting an engineering response or a PR response, and his, his background appears to be in PR. He actually worked for Bristol City Council at one stage, so it says in his LinkedIn, but anyway. Um, the What he said, he hasn't really committed to anything. All he's really said is that there's no sort of characteristic theme going through it. Now, the problem is, I mean, it's all well and good saying there's no like one defining factor, but you're having loads of failures from people around the world. I've got the same power output as a fucking shrimp, right? And, and I managed to break mine. So there we go. And then there's more on this about understanding reliability. Reliability is a concept that is not well understood by the general public. People tend to view reliability as binary. Either something is reliable and won't break, or it isn't, and it will. Well, when you're in aerospace, <laughs> reliability is king. What is really, I think, uh, I think his name's Matthew Loveridge, I think he's trying to sort of allude to is factors of safety. So for a long time, um, factors of safety have been revolving around safe life versus fail safe. Now safe life is something like your tyres on your car or on your bike. When it gets to a certain depth, um, the tyre is worn out and then you um, replace the tyre. So that is safe life. Bearings, I mean that's not really safe life in the sense that you know they have a life, um, so then they're a wearing component. Um, and then you come on to fail safe. Now, fail safe is a different design methodology. It means you design redundancy into the system. So if you were to take Shimano's crank, and or, or let's say if you took um, a bicycle frame, that would be better. They are rated usually for a particular weight. Now, let's say it's 100 kilos. What they will actually do is they will test to sometimes one and a half or two. So 150 kilos and 200 kilos, and that is your factor of safety. So a factor of safety of one and a half or two. In the case of this, this is a bit different because the, the mode of failure is not an overload, um, in my opinion, it's, it's something else. Now, if I go back to um, the PowerPoint, so, right, this is, now, I, I, I mean, I took this, you know, the, the failed crank to a few people um, to ask them what their opinion was. I mean, when I initially thought it, saw it, I thought galvanic battery type corrosion. Now, battery type or galvanic corrosion is caused by electrical ions. I think that's right, electrons, I don't know, traveling between dissimilar metals. So if you have, in this case, um, stainless steel fastener and the aluminium sort of cap, I mean, you could see this looks very similar to the insides of the Shimano crank. And you've got the same kind of setup. Admittedly, it's probably not stainless steel, um, but you have got the dissimilar metals. There is and you've just seen it, there was very little, if any, corrosion on the steel axle. It was all in the aluminium. So the aluminium has taken the hit. And you see that in a lot of other things. So look, this is the, the aluminium. It's completely shagged. I mean, this is a close-up of it. There's hardly anything on the steel, nothing. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing. Over here, there's shed loads of corrosion. Um, and then further away from where the steel interface is, you know, towards the, um, the, the, the pedal, pedal where the pedal threads, again, there was nothing. I've put in here galvanic and crevice. Now, crevice corrosion is caused by small gaps. So where I drew the C section before, crevice corrosion happens in here. I just want to be clear that there is more than one type of corrosion. So the galvanic it, it really accelerates your corrosion, but you could just have normal corrosion from something else. But anyway, we'll come to that in a minute. Right, galvanic corrosion. So I got this um, slide from um, um, hydraulic cartridge valves. Uh, there's a website for them. So if you want to know about um, galvanic corrosion, have a look at that. Now they've put the electrolyte of seawater 
it, it just needs to be an electrolyte, so water would do the same thing. Now this is pretty much what we've got. So we've got a steel axle and aluminium body. You can see in the diagram the aluminium gets attacked um, and the steel doesn't. And that is precisely what we've got. Now the reasons for this are to do with how noble the material is. So I've got two charts here. So if you have a look here, um, aluminium is down here. So that means it is um, uh, ano anodic, um, more anodic. Um, and then you've also got on this one, uh, we'll come to this in a minute, graphite, which is carbon fiber. Um, steel, I've gone back to here, is um, more cathodic. Um, and then titanium is up here. So a lot of people have titanium bikes and then you go and put your aluminium frame, aluminium stem on it, you are creating a serious battery effect. Um, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, well, you can, we'll come on to that in a second. But the crux of it is if you have dissimilar metals, you've got a problem. Now in the case of this, and I, the reason why I put this, I've struggled really, uh, I struggled to find um, a chart that showed carbon fiber but carbon fiber which is graphite is basically completely cathodic <laughs> okay about as far inert as you can get and then you've got aluminium which is oh, i've got aluminium oh aluminium alloys are here um which is is only what fourth on that list so magnesium which reacts with anything and then you know you keep going down so a lot of bikes have carbon fiber and aluminium together so you are going to set up a battery and a galvanic cell as a result. Now there are a few ways to prevent galvanic corrosion. The The best way is to get rid of the electrolyte. So if you got rid of the electrolyte completely you cannot have um, galvanic corrosion. Another thing to do is to, well if I go through these in, in sequence, um, you can have an insulating layer between the alloy of, well, in this case copper, the anode, and the stainless steel, which is the cathode, um, and then you won't get galvanic corrosion. That doesn't mean to say you won't get corrosion, you just won't get galvanic corrosion. So other types of corrosion, surface corrosion, rust, will still occur, but you won't get that accelerated hammering down on it. Um, another way is to avoid using dissimilar materials. So um, if you took, for example, rotor, so the rotor crank is um, aluminium uh, arm and aluminium body there's no dissimilar material there so you aren't going to get galvanic corrosion um, there um, and then the last two again if you if you bridge it's almost like bridging a damp course if you bridge uh, between the two materials then you will get galvanic corrosion but if you isolate it so you keep the electrolyte so water condensation away um, you won't. So that's that one. And then insulating by by virtue of coating. So in effect, this one is the same as this. So the electrolyte is still there, but you've got this insulating layer, which means that the battery effect is not there. So that's so these two are the same, but this one is just by coating, whereas this one is like a physical keep it away. Now you will see a load of this this kind of stuff in marine usage and they have what are known as sacrificial anodes so they put a piece of aluminium or magnesium or something somewhere so that the um, that material gets attacked and it's sacrificial uh, and the steel uh, doesn't get touched but it does get touched but not to the same level as an example we have this which is the famous seat post from my Cervelo S5 now this is, well, I've just taken a picture of it to upload it. This is more to show you what, what can happen. Um, so this is the seat post. That's a double seat post. Now, the earlier S5s had this. The later ones didn't. So you've got two setbacks. I think that one's zero. And that one is uh, minus 20, or is it plus 20? Further back, 20. Um, so this is the one I was using. So this is the, the furthest forward. And this is the one that had 
nothing in it. It actually had this black plastic cap um, on top of it, and then it fell out. Now, when it fell out, that's when the question started getting asked. So, if you have a look very carefully, um, you can just about see there's a crack there. And we'll come on to how that happened in a second. But, um, yeah, so there's carbon all the way around, and then you've got these aluminium inserts. So that's aluminium, and that one is aluminium, but you can't see it because the seat post clamp is in the way. This is a close-up of it. Now, you can see here, this black stuff here is a coating that has been applied. I don't think it's anodizing. I think it's more like paint. But anyway, it's a coating that's been applied. Um, and this is all bare. All bare aluminium interfaces directly into the carbon. And there, it's all started to flake and expand. And that's what's happened here. So it's actually blown it up and you can just about hopefully make out the crack that's there. Similar kind of thing is happening in the Shimano crank. So the Shimano crank, a bit of moisture gets in there and then you've also got a battery effect. Um, two things happen and then it starts to expand. As it expands, the adhesive cannot hold it and then it fails. Um, and you can't stop it really, you cannot stop it. Um, right, get it replaced. Now, I did try and get mine replaced. Now, Madison, the UK distributor, stated they would replace it when I called it. Well, they didn't state categorically, but they gave me the, um, the impression that they would replace it. Now, I bought my crank from Merlin Cycles. Now, that I've bought loads of stuff from uh, Merlin Cycles, and I've never had a response quite like that. They basically just told me to do one. Um, and the other thing they said was, they said that they don't get their gear from Madison. So I'm wondering where they get their stuff from, because it looks legit, looks genuine, um, but they, they don't get their um, parts from Madison. Anyway, so Merlin said, yeah, I must have spent 20 gay over the years with Merlin. Anyway, I'm, I'm not gonna spend more money with them now, <laughs> after that. Um, Anyway, they told me to F off, um, so uh, you know, so I thought oh, I'll make a video about it, and they probably maybe regret telling me to F off at this point, but well, that's their choice. The point is, Madison would have changed it, and if Shimano did that blanket philosophy over everyone, then they wouldn't get this video coming out accusing them of. of I'd say, I'd, I would say it's bordering on engineering negligence because. They would know that there's a problem because so many people have had failures. They can't not know because there's also an Instagram page just about it called Thanks Shimano and there's hundreds of failures on there and they all exhibit the same kind of um, failure mechanism. So, I mean, there you go. So you, you may get it replaced, you may not. You know, if you are watching at Shimano HQ and want to replace mine, then please do. <sighs> But at the end of this, we always have a happy ending. Now the happy ending is this, because, so that look bike that I own uses a BSA crank set and the rise of threaded or the re-rise re of threaded from the dead is happening. Um, BSA is, is, I think will become the dominant standard within two or three years again. Um, but that has a problem because Using a what like a modern 30 mil crank set inside a BSA bottom bracket is really really difficult because there's not really much space to work around. So as I got a bit fucked off with all of this, pissed, um, I decided to make a BSA 30. So you can you can get that now, and that uses full 6806 bearings, so it is fairly robust. Um, and then this, so that I used to absolutely pan rotor. I mean, I, the bike, my Cervelo came with a rotor crank set originally, and it was crap. I used to come up to every hill and then shift down, and quite often the chain would just come off the rings, and oh uh, god, it was horrible. So then I moved to the Shimano and blah, 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 blah. But the modern rotor stuff is very good. Now, I did watch Peak Talk's video where he took apart um, uh, a 24mm rotor crank set the manufacturing tolerance and he measured it and the manufacturing tolerance is to get that level of accuracy there's a measurement called the dbca which is basically the distance between 
um, there and there, oops, sorry, between the edge of the bottom bracket. About 90 millimeters, 90.5. On Shimano crankset, that's a very, very um, accurate dimension in the sense they're always around 90.5. They've got a bit of movement in them, but they're always around that. Rotor um, is about 95. SRAM ones can move quite dramatically and they're on the taper, so you're, you're screwed, basically. <laughs> you, you, you'll end up having to use a few spaces, but the rotor one is well engineered, the modern rotor one, so I would, you know, I'm gonna get one of them as soon as I can. Right, questions, comment. Right, there is some speculation that it's more likely to occur in humid conditions, wet and salty, and that is because electrolyte. So the electrolyte is not going to be there if you're cycling in the desert um, because it's arid, it's dry and if there's there's no electrolyte you cannot have corrosion. The, the combination and it's a modern trend towards aluminium inserts and even titanium inserts into a carbon frame is in my opinion likely to um, cause a lot of desponding because you can't see it but it's it's, it's going to corrode so as it, as it corrodes it's going to start you know to split things and then you're going to start see them come out and now Lucia Technic um, he said he said that was going to happen and you know I agree totally um, so there we go bonding failure so as in the glue has failed is in my opinion unlikely it's more the symptom rather than the cause. So looking at it, the adhesive that goes up and down it is, is well seated. It's more that the corrosion's got in there and then expanded. As it's expanded, that has caused it to fail. But the cause of expansion is corrosion. It's a known fault. I mean, they must know it's a known fault. And Shimano have been approached by a cycling magazine to explain to them is a known fault. Well, to ask them if it was a known fault, and they came back with a bit of a woolly answer. Get a 105. <laughs> if you get a 105 with um, a welded um, hollow tech uh, chain mm, crank, because it's welded, the the insulating factor doesn't exist, so it, it becomes one material. Um, and the weld is much, much stronger than adhesive, both in shear, uh, tension and compression. It's much, much stronger. And, then, and I also said get a rotor. And then finally, please comment below. I mean, this one is... I, mean, I don't know. I, I just can't believe that Shimano haven't done a full-scale recall um, because I think it's only time before someone's crank snaps when they're, like, totally on it and then it it you know the foot goes to the floor and if the foot goes to the floor and they crash it'll come back to this and you know, all all some clever little lawyer has to do is go on to the I mean, you're not even a lawyer if you want to do a personal injury claim just go on to instagram print out all those pictures and say look there is a known fault i don't know how they can do it and especially for a japanese company now japanese engineers usually the ones i've met um, so, you know, from Mitutoyo, NSK, NTN, all Japanese companies, um, operate by honor codes. Um, and the fact that, that this exists um, is probably they've been, you know, spanked by uh, someone in accounts to, to keep their mouth shut. So, there we go. Right, as a, and that's the end of this. That is the end of this. As always, remember to whack that like button. Um, if you want to go on Patreon, links down below. Um, and keep banging your hairdressers.